Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our monthly Diverse Career Webinar Series. Hope all of you are excited to be here today as we will be listening to the amazing journeys of our two special individuals today, Dr. Clara Teo and Dr. Virushni Hare Krishnan. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Clara and Dr. Virushni. Before I move on, here's some house rules that we will be adhering to throughout the webinar. Firstly, your mic will be muted throughout the session. After each session, there will be a Q&A session with the respective panelists, during which you can either put your questions in Q&A box, or you could click on your raised hand button, and we will unmute you. If you have paid for the event and are unable to be present throughout the event, you can reach to us for a video recording. To start our exciting webinar today, I would like to invite our founder, Dr. Selena Chu, to share her inspiring story on how she started Medical Prince Malaysia, Dr. Selena. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, I hope you guys find this, um, you will find this very, very useful today's morning's um, webinar. So I am Dr. Selena. Um, <clears throat> I am the founder of Medical Prince Malaysia. So. Medi for Prince Malaysia is actually a platform to connect doctors with diverse careers. Now, so how it came about, it all started um, somewhere in 2016 when my boss told me that um, I didn't have a future in anesthesia anymore and that I needed to leave. Um, that, that was, some of you may know this story, but some of you may not have heard of this. So what happened was I had a slip this and then I, I was on MC for a, a month and then when I came back to work, <clears throat> I needed like a uh, light duty to just see patients in the clinic instead of in the ICU, you know, where we actually had to lift patient, do CPR and all that. And I felt that my back just couldn't deal with it. So <clears throat> I, um, I asked for light duty and instead of giving light duty, they just told me to leave. I, I was really heartbroken because I was in the system for about seven years and I thought I've given a lot of my blood, sweat and tears in it. I thought I was going to be an intensivist. You know, I, I really love the ICU. So because of that, I, I was just so, I was just tired, you know, like, like I was, I felt like I put in so much and then I didn't get the compassion I, I needed. And I decided, okay, you know what? I am just going to take a break. So I left and I went to IMR. It's a research uh, facility under the government. And there I found it so strange because, um, we instead every day before that every day I'm coming to work to um you know to to treat patients to make sure that you know nobody dies on my call and then all of a sudden now I'm dealing with machines with uh, data there are days I go to work and um the only person I will talk to in the whole day would be the the mixed race lady across the street you know it was a very different um it was a different environment so anyway I. I was going through and I, I thought, okay, let me just take some time off to, to really like learn other things, like just give myself the opportunity to learn other stuff. Because uh, honestly, when I was there, I, I just felt that like I didn't have a purpose in life. I, I wasn't sure what I was doing anymore. Like I, I, I've always wanted to be a doctor and then now suddenly I'm not treating patients. I'm not doing anything. It, you know, that that was relevant to what I, I thought was purposeful. You know, I, I wasn't keeping anyone alive. That That's how I felt. I was going through a very tough time. I had nobody to talk to. I had nobody to seek help from. And <clears throat> so I, I decided to just give myself time, like a month, uh, a year, sorry, a year to just try new things. And then I was so much happier after that. I have learned so many new things. I, I wrote two books. I published them as ebooks. Um, I started dabbling in a lot of other stuff. And then I was just happy with myself. And then I saw that a lot of people around me, all my friends, my colleagues who were in the same boat, I would say, they, they were struggling, you know, they, they left clinical, they didn't know what to do. And then the, the thing that really hit it hard for me was a close friend of mine who also transferred to a different hospital. And um, when she transferred to a new hospital, she was bullied really badly by her superiors, her specialists, her HOD. It drove her to depression and it, it really, it, it, she started having all this suicidal ideation and all, and she had to take a break. So when she took a break, uh, she, came, she, she left the clinical world. She was in non-clinical and I, I met up with her and she said that, you know what, I think I need to go back 
to that same place that gave me all that that depression and all because I I didn't feel purposeful, you know, and that that really just struck it really hard for me. I thought, okay, no, let let's try something, let's start something, you know, I, because I can see that there is need for doctors outside of clinical medicine because we can do a lot of things to really help improve the healthcare. Because right now you see all our our comrades in the front line, they are really tired. They just going through the days, you know, trying to keep everyone alive. But, you know, they are, they are front line because they are there to keep the front line, right? But there, there must be people on the back that's there to support them. So if we are not, um, the non-clinical um, people who are doing all this stuff in the healthcare, they may not understand what the healthcare, the frontliners are really going through. So that's why I realized that with doctors, you know, because we already have that experience, we already have that knowledge in clinical, we know what needs to be fixed and how to get it, you know, to get the, the machine running more efficiently. So that's how I started this medical prints and in hopes that, you know, with more doctors in the non-clinical side, we can actually really, really make healthcare a bit more efficient, you know, um, education or maybe just, you know, just changing things. So that's how Medic Footprints came about. And it's not just me. We actually have a team. Uh, I have a co-founder and I have a huge team of volunteers as well. They are really wonderful. There's people who are running this program as well. So um, if you, any, any one of you want to get involved, you can just contact me or um, drop us a line on our website. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed today's uh, webinar. Um, Thank you, Dr. Selina. Medic Footprints is indeed a safe space for doctors to develop their career with great support. I hope those attending could also share more details about Medic Footprints to your friends and colleagues so that we can grow this community together. Moving on, have you ever felt unhappy with your life as a medical doctor? Feeling restricted in our rigid healthcare system that we don't know what are other non clinical options? At some point of our lives, at our medical career journey, a lot of doctors are feeling like this, with long hour shift, on-call system, and harsh working environment with minimum of days, a lot of doctors struggle to meet work-life balance. Today, Medic Footprints Malaysia is going to feature two special guests to share with us about the journey transitioning from our traditional clinical pathway to the current Phil, which is life coaching and insurance industry. Both fields are more interconnected with our lives as medical doctors than we ever realize and comes with unique job prospects. First of all, I would like to invite Dr. Clara Q to speak about how life coaching changed her life and how it can transform the lives of doctors and help you achieve your goals. Dr. Clara is a life coach who was previously a medical doctor in Ministry of Health Malaysia in 2017 until 2021. Having personally experienced the transformative power of life coaching, Dr. Clara's mission as a life coach is to help people uncover the best version of themselves. She has helped many doctors feel in the burnout of their profession to lead happy and meaningful lives. Through a thought-provoking process, she helps doctors to recognize their interests and strengths maximize their potential and achieve their life goals. I would like to call upon Dr. Clara. Hi everyone, thank you. My name, thank you Selva and also thank you Selena for organizing and having me here today. So my name is Dr. Clara and I am a medical doctor turned life coach. And it is my absolute pleasure to be here today at this webinar to share about my own experiences. So I'm going to be sharing on how I became a doctor, left the medical profession and became a full-time life coach. I will also be sharing with you what life coaching is and how you can transition into this career. I hope that my sharing will help you see what's possible for you outside of clinical medicine. So I grew up in a typical Asian household and it was my father's dream to become a medical doctor. And hence it was imprinted on me that being a doctor was the best career that could ever be. On top of that, my teachers at school 
relatives, society, TV shows such as Grey's Anatomy made me believe that by becoming a doctor, I will have job security, respect from the society, good pay, and many more good things. You name it. So why not? Off I go to medical school to pursue this career. It was safe to say that medical school was not an easy ride. People say uni days are the best time of your life. But as a medic, that's far from the truth. While your non-medic friends are out and about enjoying life, we're burying our head in thick medical textbooks, endless lectures, and studying to pass our exams. But despite the difficulties that we experience in medical school, none of that would prepare us for what we had to go through during housemanship. Am I right? And I bet that the sudden shift in lifestyle during housemanship has brought many of us to tears, including myself. As a houseman, we're constantly bombarded with mental, emotional, and physical stress. But even though housemanship was tough, what do most of us tell ourselves? We either tell ourselves that it will get better or I don't have any other choice. The people around us tell us not to give up because we have worked so hard to get here. Therefore, even when we're miserable at our job, we hold on to this glimmer of hope that things will get better after housemanship. Personally, when I was doing my housemanship, I had many thoughts of quitting, but held on because I thought, number one, I had spent too many years in this field and I need to at least get my full MMC by compulsory. Uh, completing my compulsory service. And number two, I was also afraid to step out of my comfort zone because I did not think I was qualified to do any other job as our field is highly specialized. But as I got closer to the end of my compulsory service, I felt more lost than ever. I did not see a future. KKM was not giving out per permanent posts and there was little to no opportunity to specialize. But even if there was an opportunity, I did not know what specialty to pick. Plus, I was also very burnt out. So I remember waking up every morning, dragging my feet to go to work. And can you imagine waking up every morning, being in resistance with yourself? It's no wonder that my mental and physical health started to deteriorate. But I was still afraid to leave KKM because I have this limiting belief that if I quit, I won't have a stable career. Unfortunately, as doctors, we're conditioned to believe that once a doctor, always a doctor. We can never step out of this safety zone to explore other things as we're not equipped or skillful enough. And that being a doctor is the only thing that we know. So seeing that I was at my wit's end and was severely dissatisfied with my career, and that it was also bleeding into my personal life, my friend who works in corporate introduced life coaching to me. I first met my life coach in June 2020, and it changed my life forever. What started off as career coaching turned into a life-changing experience where I no longer look at myself as a victim of my circumstances. So life coaching helped me shift my mindset and approach situations with a different lens to look for opportunity. It also made me realize that, hey, all this while, I've been living in someone else's dream. And that made me start to look for what is it that I really want in life and how am I going to get there? It helped me overcome my limiting beliefs that many of us have, which is some form of I'm not good enough. More importantly, life coaching improved my relationships with my loved ones. I started using the knowledge I've gained from life coaching to coach my family, my friends, and my colleagues. And I saw their lives improve. So this brought joy and purpose into my life. And I felt alive for the very first time in a long time. This sense of purpose made me look into life coaching as a career. I started looking up different coaching schools and decided to enroll myself with the Institute of Professional Excellence in Coaching, short for IPAC. They're an American coaching school known as one of the best coaching schools in the world. So I resigned in April this year to pursue life coaching full time. And I was surprised to see that living the medical profession was not difficult at all. I did not face any stigma for doing so. 
I then realized that a lot of the judgment that I had around leaving the medical profession prior to this were all made up in my head. I was initially afraid to leave clinical medicine because it was my own limiting beliefs that were stopping me from pursuing what I was passionate about. So let me share something with you. Our past experiences shape our thoughts and our thoughts affect our feelings and our feelings affect our actions. Remember, thought, feeling, action. So if you have a thought of I'm not good enough, of course you feel sad and unmotivated. And that will lead to inaction, not wanting to do anything. But may I share an insight with you? You are not your thoughts. So many of you are probably hearing the word life coach for the very first time. Now, what is a life coach? You're familiar with the word coach. Our favorite professional athletes would not be where they are without their life coaches. I mean, without their coaches. Many corporate executives, CEOs, entrepreneurs, and business professionals would not be as successful without business coaching. But there is another type of coaching called life coaching. So a life coach is a professional who's trained to help you maximize your potential and become the best version of yourself. They partner with you to identify your deepest desires and create strategies to ensure you achieve your version of success. So many of you have heard of therapy. So therapy are made out of psychologists, psychiatrists, counselors. And while there are some minor similarities, life coaching differs from therapy. And how they are different is that therapy focuses on your past, what happened to you, your past traumas, whereas life coaching focuses on your future, where you would like to be in life and will help you get there. So therapy gets you from a state of dysfunction to functional, whereas life coaches get you from a state of functional to optimum or fantastic. So anyone who seeks to improve their life can work with a life coach because a life coach will help you move away from negative inner self-talk, limiting beliefs, fear of failure that keeps you from reaching your goal. A life coach will also help you reach your goal in the most efficient, effective, and rewarding way possible. So in, sorry, here you can see in this graph, it shows that those who use a life coach actually have smarter goal setting, more balanced life, lower stress level, improved communication skills, and also more self-confidence. The Institute of Coaching, which is an affiliated of Harvard Medical School, reported that 70% of individuals who receive coaching benefited from improved work performances, relationships, and also communication skills. Also, 86% of companies felt that they regained more than the investment they made into coaching. So in Malaysia, life coaching is still a very new field that is quite foreign unless you're in corporate. And the regulatory body is still quite loose. But there is an international ethics body for life coaches called the ICF, which stands for International Coaching Federation. So even though the regulatory body is loose, if you want to be an, a professional life coach and pursue this as a full-time career, I would suggest signing up for a proper training program because there are a few life coaching schools in Malaysia and many overseas. So do your research to see which school resonates the most with you and what your budget is like. And another thing to consider when choosing your life coaching school is to ensure that it's ICF certified because this will increase your credentials as a life coach. And after getting your certification, the next thing you can do is to start applying for your ICF credentials. This is not compulsory, but if you want to pursue executive coaching, they will usually hire someone with ICF credentials. So a life coach, many of you might ask, how much do they earn? So a life coach can earn anywhere from 100 ringgit to few thousand ringgit per hour. Corporate or executive, executive coaches will usually demand a higher fee. So to sum it up, life coaching has changed my life for the better. And I found meaning in transforming the lives of my clients through coaching. And I'm the happiest I've ever been in both my professional and my personal life. Now, I wake up excited and happy to go to work every day. And my clients progress motivates me to continue to spread 
the power of coaching. So thank you everyone for your time today. And for those of you who want to connect with me, you can contact me here. So those of you who want to send a picture, you can. All right, so thank you. Thank you so much for the insightful session, Dr. Clara. I'm actually very interested uh, regarding this. And I hope that all, all of our attendees also will uh, contact you for a session with life coaching. Thank, Thank you, you Dr. Kara, for your time today.